Well, meantime, US and British police have been demanding Google remove a number of video clips from the internet video service YouTube. Now, these requests have been made before, but there's reportedly been a sharp rise lately in the number in the past six months. Let's talk a bit more about this uh, development. Uh, talk to Jim Killock. He's executive director of the Open Rights Group. He's joining us on the line from London tonight. Jim, very good evening. Um, when officials and governments yeah. ask for the removal of online videos, isn't that blatant censorship, or have I got that wrong? Well, I think that's a very interesting question because uh, we actually don't know uh, from what Google have published whether these were taken down because the police requested it, because Google decided that uh, they didn't want the material on their YouTube website, or even if there was a court order involved. We're pretty sure there wasn't a court order involved because we think they would have published that. Um, but it appears that actually what's happening is that the, uh, the Google's um, own policy is to remove this sort of content. Uh, which I, th I think actually points to corporate censorship uh, rather than government censorship. They should be waiting for the government to ask a court whether this material ought to be taken down or not. And I'm just reading a little bit more into this now. It seems that uh, police asked the media to, um, to provide unused footage of the riots. Now, is that crossing the line, though, where yeah. media freedom becomes police intelligence gathering? I, th I think that's absolutely true. I mean, in the case of the UK riots, uh, I don't know what's happening in America now, but in the case of the riots in the UK a few months ago, uh, we were asked, or, or rather the media was asked to provide footage that they'd recorded to see whether you know, there was evidence of criminality there. That's wrong because the media may well be asking people questions. They, may, they need to be able to film in a way that people are, uh, you know, actually respect them and don't try to attack them as some sort of surveillance uh, outfit. Uh, it completely compromises the freedom of the media if uh, that sort of material is handed over. So that's, that's an absolutely wrong thing for the police to have asked. Well, the official cause to remove these uh, videos is put down to protecting people's privacy, of course, that their security would avoid hate speech. Who decides uh, where that line is drawn, though? Well, this is, this is the question, and it has to be a court. Um, an open court can look at the material, the media can report what's going on, and if material is asked to be removed, uh, at least that is done in a publicly accountable way. The problem comes, I think, in the situation we see now here with Google, is that the police are advising Google, it appears, uh, of what material might be breaking the law, and then Google decides to uh, censor that material without a court order. Now, you can sort of understand that on the one hand because YouTube is a uh, it's a platform and a site, it's not a search engine, but uh, really it is working in exactly the same way. It's a public platform for us all to use mm -hmm. and it is wrong for Google to start making those judgments without uh, the appearance of a court. But I suppose the flip side is a lot of people would say that you know, there is a need for, for rules so that people are protected from those who want to spread trouble via the web. Yeah, the, 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 there is a framework for that it is called the rule of law and the rule of law involves courts. If you remove the courts from that system and just say, well, let's have corporate entities deciding what should or shouldn't be on the web, then you stop having the rule of the law and you have, in fact, effectively vigilante justice operated by corporate entities, and that's wrong. Of course, another story running parallel to this has been in the news the last couple of days. Just a couple of days ago, we saw, didn't we, that WikiLeaks is going to go on hold for now because several online financial institutions have shut off their donations. Now, we've seen this story today. I mean, the Internet's supposed to be an open platform. Who's pulling the strings, do you think? Well, I think here we see uh, United States government pressure on those companies, and again, that is absolutely wrong. WikiLeaks have probably not broken any U United States law, uh, and we also know that WikiLeaks, um, you know, that they, they've, do they've done something which has annoyed the government, uh, but the government themselves really made the mistake in having such poor security that that data uh, leaked out. So they're both, the government's to blame, it's their own fault for being so silly about the systems they set up, allowing a million people access to the documents. Um, and now they're trying to put the cat 
you know, back in the bag, so to speak. And, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to use, again, pressure on corporate people to to uh, stop WikiLeaks from operating. They need to take WikiLeaks to court, they need to establish that what they're doing is unlawful, and then you need to go with a court order to those companies. And if those court, or, uh, court orders are not in place, and those companies are simply doing what the government uh, asks them to behind closed doors, then again we see a complete failure of democracy and an undermining of people's right to free speech and to organize online. That is, That again is vigilante justice, it isn't the rule of law. Jim Killock, Executive Director of the Open Rights Group on the Line from London tonight, thank you uh, for your thoughts on this new subject today.